Viewer discretion is advised. Your fave will be criticized. That's Chris. That's Shan. And welcome to CCTV, the nonstop pop show. And today we will be discussing the boys' summer bop thrill ride. If you're new to our show, Shan and I have a myriad of experiences in the music industry, from performing on stage and recording in the studio to managing music business contracts and budgets. So here at CCTV, we analyze artists' careers and songs from both the creative and professional angles. Indeed, indeed. And if you're new to us or just new to the boys in general, we do have a Pop 101 episode dedicated to the boys' career and discography so far. So it came out before this video. So you can definitely play catch up along with that video and definitely make sure to check out the playlist that accompany it. So we're going to get into it. Is it bopping? This is Is It Boppin'. Here, we listen to the song and discuss the production, lyrics, video, and everything in between. So let's find out. Is it a bop or a flop? Thrill Ride was written and arranged by Albin Nordquist, Gabriel Brandis, and Jo Yoon Kong, who are all writers who work with many other K-pop artists, but the underlying common artist seems to be like the NCT umbrella, mm -hmm. like Dream, 127, etc. Um, and Eric and Sun Woo from The Boys also contributed to the lyrics. So what do you think of Thrill Ride? Uh, when I saw the credits for the song, I thought, oh, that I know the Al I know the Albin name. Mm -hmm. um, the other two, I can't say that like I knew right off the bat, but I can definitely hear that influence or not even that influence. I can definitely hear the writing style that is so familiar with NCT crew. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I would say is uh, the teasers did not give the impression that the song would sound the way it did. Like it, it just sounded a lot different, which is, I guess, good. You want people to kind of say, all right, I hear something. Oh, I recognize that sound, but not completely give it away. <laughs> Do I be? Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was like no hint of like, this is where the song is going to go. So I like that for sure. Um, what do you think about production wise? Uh, what was going on? Did you enjoy what was going on? Or do you feel like it was a bit much? Because it, it was a lot of sounds. It's a lot of sounds. It's, it's a lot of sounds, but I think it's actually mixed very well. Um, yeah, I think the production yeah. is is fun. That did did it, it did, you know that that whole hook? It's used yes. in every way possible. It's in the production. <laughs> you know, they sing it. There's like a whistle of it, um, but it's not annoying. Like by the end of the song, I'm not like, oh my gosh, like I don't want to ever hear that hook again. You know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of like the depth um, of the whole production. I think the baseline mm -hmm. that runs through it um, is relatively subtle, but gives it kind of a nice kind of bounce base to it. Um, and then kind of the all the different kind of higher things aren't too jarring. So yeah, I think it's actually pretty well done. How about you? Agreed. I think something that um, a lot of listeners and viewers will notice is that you like to point out that sometimes the live instruments are necessary in certain songs. Um, but in this song, there are definitely a lot of like synthesized instruments. Like there's like a flutey thing that going, it's definitely someone using like some DAW instrument and playing it on the keyboard because I was like, that's not natural, but it doesn't sound like icky. Like certain things sound super icky. Um, but this song is, uh, is fun. It sounded almost like an ice cream truck. Uh, the way it just kind of mm. like you, you can think of some type of like really easy melody and the way the song just kept playing the melody and you hear it in different ways. It's almost like the song was the melody was playing itself so much where when you hear the whistle, it's almost that some, something natural that would happen to someone listening to the song. Like eventually you'll be like, and then maybe you're just chilling. So it kind of has like this natural progression in the song and then a natural progression for a listener. So I like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's like little flourishes in the mix that I really like. Like there are bottle tapping sounds um, in like, literally 30 seconds in y'all. I, I timed it 30 seconds in. There are like little bottle sounds that sound like the end of Missy Elliott's work it. And then there are like some retro record scratching in the do 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 in the first bit of the song um the drums are nice for sure and i think it created a lot of fun tension 
not where it's like angsty, like, yeah, I'm feeling like this. It was just like, boom, boom, boom. And then the chorus mm-hmm. came. I do wish that there was a little bit more tension building in that pre, but it the release into the chorus was good enough so that I'm not disappointed. I just wanted more because I'm greedy and I like the way the boom, boom, boom sounded mm-hmm. <laughs> before the pre. Um, and the, the one more thing I noticed is that there are a lot of sirens that could have been annoying, but weren't. They were used very well. Or it's like the ice cream truck's coming, ice cream tr- truck's coming. Second verse comes in. Ooh, ooh, the ice cream truck is here. You know, so, <laughs> so I like that for sure. Nice. Yeah, I do think <laughs> the structure of the song is interesting. Um, like mm. the two verses are very different. Each line is kind of different. Um, random yeah. rap moments and then more singing and then more rap. Like it's like the whole structure is interesting. That's also very yeah. NCT. Sorry. Um, yeah. But um, it's hard not to have <laughs> that comparison. I think like if you played this mm-hmm. after Hot Sauce, you know, or whatever, like it's, yeah. they sound like a they're in the same, yeah yeah, 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 the same kind of vein. So agreed, agreed. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the vocals? Uh, vocally, I think they sound good. Like, as <laughs> I'm not being biased here. I really think they sounded good. Um, the ad libs, like you said, I think are a highlight for this song for sure. Um, of course, they can sing, but the ad libs definitely add this atmosphere of crowd participation. Partition, <laughs> participation. If I were a fan listening to this or if I were at a concert, even just in my car, and you don't know Korean, you know the, yeah, what? How you feeling? Like these little moments like that that pop up into the chorus or in the verse, like you said, definitely um, adds like a fun element. And then on top of that, not just for the sake of fans listening or like casual listeners, it allows sub vocals like Hak Nyun to get shine finally because this boy only came out to just pop his head out and then disappears. And I'm like, please stop wasting my baby's time. Oh my God. But he's happy to be there. <laughs> Yeah, the line distribution in this group is not the best. Um, no. Yeah, it's not the most even. I mean, I get it, but then also it's just, it's it's tough with it's such a big yeah. group, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I th- yeah, I think the vocals sound really good. The vocals are really, the production is, the production's really well done. It's all very warm. I think it almost sounds like they're smiling while they're singing the whole thing. Yeah. Like you can kind of right. hear the happiness in it. Um, yes, so that's yes. definitely like a vocal direction that they were likely given. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, I, I enjoy that. Um, I think my only sure. thing is like thrill, ride, like, thrill, thrill ride. Like there's like oh, something uh, with that or something. Yeah. I, I yeah. think it almost sounds, I don't know if I didn't know the song was called thrill ride. I think they'd be saying something else. Like <laughs> I thought that. Sh- yeah, I thought they were saying. I thought they were saying sugar rush, sugar rush, sugar rush, sugar rush. <laughs> but see, the thing is, I, I think is uh, it's definitely like a Korean thing for sure. Because I have like some clients that will say like birthday and not do the th sound. I mean, it's a little bit tough to do it um, if it's not native to you. So I can understand that. Sugar ride, sugar ride, and it's yes. the L. So you have a double L. That consonant, that double consonant will always trip someone up who's not a native speaker. So yeah, there's a lot of just sounds that are unfamiliar to the Korean, mm. like just, I guess, sounds <laughs> unfamiliar to them. So right. I can understand that being like a and turning into like a, it worked out for them because it yeah. sounds rhythmic. It doesn't sound awkward. Um, but yeah, I think the song altogether was really nice. And I like the R&B parts, like the sultry, every time Chen he's saying, I was thinking, oh, yeah, this is that transition that I need. Um, and Kevin got lines, too, because in The Steeler, even you said, I want to be that guy who just flicks his hand. <laughs> he got he got lines. He got more. He got lines in the verse, not as a pre, but as an actual like vocalist and like a lead vocalist in a in, in the verse. So that's great for him. <laughs> I think about the hand flick. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you mentioned the, or yeah, the R&B parts, that bridge is really good. Um, they all yeah. sound great. And then I love the lead into Sun Woo's little whisper moment. Oh, yeah. Um, that and that little, like milkshake. yeah, that little build up to the final chorus. I enjoyed that. Yes. Yes. So shout out to Sang Yun holding it down with that clean belt, honey. <laughs> Mama like. Just yes. Said. Mama like. Yes. <laughs> um, any thoughts on the lyrics? Um, the lyrics, you know, what, 
what do you think about the lyrics? I have no thoughts on the lyrics, really. Um, <laughs> they're quite uh, basic, honestly. I mean, obviously, again, mm. I, I don't read Korean, so I, was, I read the translation, so they may sound more poetic in Korean. Um, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's just a very typical, like, cute. Okay. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I have no <laughs> thoughts, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I put you on the spot. Um, so yeah, uh, I as I read as well, I just got Summer Romance, a fling. A fling, if you mm-hmm. will. It ain't nothing but a fling, baby, a fling, baby. People who don't know that song, I'm sorry for you. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's it's electric, this unfamiliar chemistry. It's spreading out. It's one of the lyrics that like stood out to me. There's mentioning of dazzling whatevers. Um, Kevin says that his lips are dry. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a sense of thirst um, and yearning, but like not like desperate yearning. More just like, hey, we're at this... We're at this wherever we are. We're in this moment in the summertime. Let's let's have some fun. Uh, it's not too serious for sure. Um, but I guess in typical, like, I guess Korean lyric fashion, it just comes across a lot more poetic if you say something like it's dazzling, unfamiliar chemistry, things like that. Instead of saying, yeah, I'm just trying to smash real quick. Let me sit in a smash, you know, beep, you know, like, <laughs> A little bit more poignant. You might feel a little bit more uh, um, convinced to go with this person if they were saying, "You dazzle me <laughs> with your with your unfamiliar chemistry." <laughs> Whew, but yeah, speaking of unfamiliar chemistry um, and unfamiliarity, um, the video. I was mm-hmm. not sure what was happening in the video. Um, I was thinking roller coaster. I was thinking something thrilling. I wasn't thrilled with the mm-hmm. video. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just with the teasers and whatnot, it kind of led me to believe that we were going to be having the time of our lives. Uh, so what, what do you think? Yeah, about the video? I agree. Like if you're going to call your song thrill ride and then like, like even they're out there at the pool, I thought there'd be like a slide or something. And oh, then they're yeah, at like something. the night theme park, but there's no real, <laughs> like not there's, I don't know. There's no roller coaster. There's no like even yeah. like bumper cars, like something that gets your like heart racing a little more, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I found that a little strange. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think the video was OK. I think they have better videos, honestly. I think it mm. seemed very. It's almost like there was a lot going on, but not a lot going on at the same time. Like it was just so many different shots, which I know there's so many of them that you have to give yeah, each yeah. one their moment. So I, I understand that, but right. I don't know. I, I, I don't really feel the need to watch it again, to be honest. Um, like uh, it, there was nothing I that special to me about it. Yeah. And I hear you. I understand. Um, as a, um, <laughs> in, in our pop one-on-one episode for the boys, I called myself a duh, which is like the short form of the B, the fandom mm. name as a duh. I will be coming back to this video <laughs> as much as I complained that it was just like a little bit, not what I was expecting. They look good. And so good. In fact, that today while I was with the client, um, they lost connection and I thought, Oh, let me watch the video. In the meantime, I was so exhausted talking to this person. No offense to the person. I'm just a sleepy person. Uh, but I was exhausted and I saw the video and I guess I got excited because suddenly I felt like, <laughs> I was awakened, <laughs> but not in some crazy kind of way. But my, I guess like my heart started accelerating. Like it was thrilling know, but... for you. <laughs> <laughs> because they look so cute. Oh my goodness. These All right. Well, well, what I, what I can say, <laughs> I do, I do appreciate how, I do appreciate how comfortable they look mm-hmm. in front of the camera. Um, right. They're very loose. Like they're very silly. They, they pull faces and you can tell they're having fun, which I appreciate. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Y'all hear how he cut me off when I was just fawning. Oh my god! I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. But um, <laughs> joking. they're very young. Gonna... <laughs> I'm not that old. Stop exposing me. I'm not that old. <laughs> but any hoodle doodle. Aside from them looking really cute, like it was just very much not like in the sense of like I'm attracted to them, but I think they are cute. Like it was very much like sweet life. Mm-hmm. They watch. Mm-hmm. Means high school musical too. You know what? Chris is not gonna laugh at me when I say I'm not attracted to them. They are attractive. I'm not gonna deny that. I have eyes. Anyway, it's like it's very cute, like resort 
mm-hmm. you know, and the, and the first verse is all about like the resort theme, them being like on a timeshare of some sort. I don't know. But each one of them play like a staff member, like a bellhop, a hot lifeguard, just boys playing. Right. And then the basketball dancings were fun, but they greased up to you so much. <laughs> That boy like a Krispy Kreme donut. He was just out here like, oh my can I help God. you? <laughs> I went to the city this weekend. <laughs> this is perfect. So yeah, I was just like, he was really glazed. And I just thought it was a little bit too much oil. <laughs> but I mean, even with LJ, I call Hyunjay LJ for those who don't know, because he looks like Lee Tuk's son, um, Lee Tuk from Super Junior. But he got a lot of serious screen time too. And between the two of them, they were just like primary focus of the video and I get that they're good looking but I just feel like with members like Hak Hyun and you know even Sung Hyun I barely saw them you know so I think it was just a little bit it could be a little bit more evenly distributed like vocally dance wise Mm -hmm. or what have you you know I'm saying so that's my only kind of like gripe with it really yeah, I mean, I think Hyunjae is very talented. He's clearly like, I feel like he's maybe the most well-rounded. He's a great dancer. He's a really good voice. Kind of, and then maybe that's mm-hmm. why they kind of push him mm-hmm. to the front for so much of it. But yeah, when you have a group for this sure. big, um, you got to give some moments to the others, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only because I've seen it done. Um, the second verse is actually pretty okay. Like like video-wise, that starts to get, get, that starts to get more thrilling in the sense like there are bumper cars. They're just like obnoxiously led version i don't know they're not bumper cars they're more like those like four-wheeler like you know yeah yeah, yeah. I, I just buggy. don't that's not the word i feel like yeah. i don't know it didn't need to be that cool like they could have been at yeah, like an actual cool. theme park you know what i mean like if you're gonna call your song the thrill ride like i want a roller coaster so let's talk about the choreography um i do think the choreography is really good there there is a there's a bounce that kind of underlies mm-hmm. the entire song and the choreography right. sits in that really well. Um, I think it's very consistent in the sense that with the other boys tracks, it does give the every boy a moment to kind of step away, you know, allows kind of yeah. like groups of five or groups of six or whatever to kind of do their thing yeah. and they can take breaks. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of like mirrors and levels and ripples and just very dynamic things um but yeah i think it's probably the most relaxed choreo i've seen from them in a long time um like it's very loose in the sense that like a lot of it was just like very groovy that you can keep your core Mm -hmm. very loose through a lot of it you don't because it's like for example like the stealer like it's so sharpened like there's all these things happening (laughs) you have to stay like very tense like in your core in order to like hit all that and you don't need to do that with this one so this one looked really fun I agree. I agree. I think it's a, it's a mixture of trendy and original movement. Um, I don't know what the movement is called, but there's like this little shoulder rock skip that they do. I forgot the name of it, but my friend keeps trying to make me teach her, but it's very trendy on TikTok now. Mm. Uh, four years ago, there was a move where it's like a like an adaptation of the dab, I guess. But it's it came from a dance crew a member. He calls it the Kangsta walk. So I, I think certain moments like that, um, when they're like, the the head dip as they're walking in that conga Mm -hmm. line um yeah that is definitely the kangsta walk for sure i thought it was cute i've seen it done a bunch of times we've all seen the dab get overdone and overkilled um so this is probably the most innovative i've seen it and innovation in the sense of like not reinventing the wheel but just not being boring and having everyone just stand and doing it i like the conga line it was cute and i think it was great that it, it requires a great deal of focus and not fall out of line (laughs) <laughs> so kudos to them for snaking it and then diagonal making it a diagonal yeah. um, and they, there's handography in the chorus that makes the dance a lot more intricate than it seems as soon as that chorus comes in there's like some na 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 finger 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 and i'm like what is happening they look like they were throwing up some little gang signs but like cute ones like i'm not mad at that at all it looks <laughs> it looks relaxed but i'm sure this is still very hard to learn um and, yeah. and hard to clean as well um, like even the little groovy moments, actually, sometimes that's actually harder to clean. Um, cause For some sure. people's hips might just move a little bigger than others. Like it's actually hard to clean that. So yeah, yeah. they, they look really good. But yeah, you know, shout out to Jacob, Juyun and LJ, Hyunjae for the cute little footwork at the end. Um, after the, 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 was it the bridge. Yeah. I thought that was cute. Definitely cute. All right. So what is your final rating for this song? Oh. Yeah, so I give the song, I'll give the song an 
eight. I was thinking 8.5, but I think an eight is suitable. Um, I did want something a little bit stronger from them, but I think with the past releases of like Breaking Dawn and then their other song for the universe um, app, the Weverse, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was just, they were going down a little dark trend and they probably wanted to get out of it. I mean, they probably already had this song already planned, but for people seeing them, they probably want to do something bright and it's summertime as well. Um, unless they did like a summer night kind of thing, there was nothing else they really could do unless they waited until maybe the fall. And that would have been too long, I think. Um, and on top of that, like Bloom Bloom Pow is probably one of my favorite songs by them. It's super cute and like really syrupy. And this one still had that element of cute, but it wasn't so like <laughs> nasally, like I had mentioned in our 101. This mm-hmm. is more grounded. It's more like high teen early college freshman kind of cute where it's still kind of naive without sounding like children could do it you know so yeah what about you i will give this one a 7.5 um Mm -hmm. so i tend to not love the cutesy stuff you know i've said that i've said that a lot in our previous episodes it's just Mm -hmm. for some reason it's just i don't tend to love it um But I think in the larger context of their discography, like I think this one is a great addition to it. This would, this will be a fun moment in the concerts. I think it'll be mm-hmm. a fun, you know, fun section where they can do, you know, a couple of the cute songs together. I think this one has a fun energy to it. And I'm excited yeah. to see their music show performances of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's decent. It's not something I will be like trying to listen to on repeat a lot, but it I, I won't skip it if it comes up. <laughs> copy that copy that i don't blame you for that one so for the boys i'm hoping that i mean it's a little too far ahead to be like oh for the next comeback but um <laughs> i do hope that they at least release maybe like a little like special clip as they call them for like another one of the songs on the album. Um, mm. I think maybe Nightmares might be a little bit too spooky for the summertime. But if they did decide like they wanted some extra bonus content for fans, uh, the song Nightmares on their album was nice. It was spooky, but not Halloween-y, which I appreciated. Um, and the chorus has a nice melody and the production. Um, everything's arranged in a way uh, where they contrast and it doesn't sound awkward. It's just, it's interesting to listen to for sure. Um, but yeah, Aside from that, I just hope that they are able to, or the company rather, Cracker is able to find a sound that doesn't link them to SM-esque sounds and writers. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they can't do it, but I'm wondering how long they can, they will be able to make this kind of music without drawing the comparison. Yeah. Because even though they're good at what they do, I don't know who the boys are completely. Like they're good, they're talented, yeah. But what is their sound? So that's my only kind of thing. What about you? What do you think is up for them? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think from like an A and R perspective, sometimes it does feel like they're just getting. I don't want to say reject songs. I, I feel like that's maybe not. I feel like that's makes it sound more negative than it is. But it just does feel mm-hmm. like that these songs are not written specifically for. The boys. Yeah, with like them in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like it does feel like maybe there's a structure, a, a, a demo, like a half written song that then they were like, oh, like the boys want this and then they develop it, but the bass is not for them. And so I, I feel like that's why we're always comparing them because, like, again, like I said, NCT Dream, if you play Hot Sauce right before this, mm-hmm. like they totally sound like they're the same group. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree. That's a problem because if you want to grow as an artist, like you have to establish your own song. So, so I feel like they do need to get writers on board that can start from scratch with these boys. It does seem like Sun Woo and a few of the others do like to write. So like getting Mm -hmm. them in the studio involved from the beginning, as opposed to coming in later and writing their raps alone, you know, like, I think definitely there needs to be some development there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, for the next comeback, I do hope we get something darker from them. I mean, it's just what Um, I prefer, honestly. Um, And I think even something a little more subtle, I think would be good for them. Mm -hmm, I I feel mm -hmm. like, like the Steeler had a little bit of that, but I feel like in general, they're still just really trying to prove, it feels like they're trying to prove themselves. And I think they're, they're at a point where they don't need to push that as hard. I feel like with kingdom and everything that they they've done that. So I feel like they can try to do yeah. something a little more mellow. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. So 
What do you all think about the song? The bees, are you satisfied with your thorough ride? Or do you feel like the uh, the ride could have gone a little bit longer or maybe a little bit different than how it was presented to you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Don't forget to follow us on CCTV Pops on all social media. And until next time, that's Chris. That's Shan. And we are CCTV. <laughs> Bye. Bye.